What would you say are some of the top five uh, most common mistakes that people make when it comes to you know optimizing for cold start performance? Um, probably the first mistake I see users make, especially with JavaScript, is importing the entire AWS SDK. Uh, this is common most cost, or most blog posts you see when you when you're learning how to do something in AWS, like write to DynamoDB. You'll see something like you know const AWS equals require AWS SDK. Now, this is a call from the V2 SDK, which isn't um, built into like sub-modules by default, but you don't need to load the whole SDK. When you do this, there is a long directory of clients that Node is going to load. And if you only need one client, you can actually reach in there and grab just the client you need. So the difference of that is literally a little bit of extra code. Instead of requiring just the AWS SDK, you can require AWS SDK slash clients slash, and then the client you want. Then in my example, I'm loading SNS. And we can see that the difference between those two calls is hundreds of milliseconds on your in iteration time. So if we just grab one client out of the runtime, it's about 104 milliseconds in my testing. Uh, but if you load the entire runtime, there the entire AWS SDK from the runtime, it's 324 milliseconds. It's like 3x slower just from a tiny, simple, simple code change. So I think number one, that's the biggest thing, is make sure you're only loading the code you need into your Lambda function. Uh, number two is overcomplicating the deployment or overcomplicating your packaging. Um, there was this weird phase serverless developers went through, which hopefully were passed, which is believing that Lambda layers are free overhead. Like you could just put <laughs> dependencies into your Lambda layer and it doesn't count to your limit. Uh, that's not the case. For any zip-based Lambda function, which are Lambda layers only support zip-based packaging. The total amount of your code and any layer you add all added up has to be less than 250 megabytes. That's a challenge for a couple of cases. Use, using Lambda layers too early when you're not sure you need them, I think is mistake number two. They add a lot of complexity to packaging, and then they they certainly don't improve your cold start time because those bytes have to be loaded at the end of the day. Um, number three, and I guess these these aren't that much of an order because I'm kind of riffing here, but number three is, is the RAM issue we discussed earlier. Swapping at a NIT is going to hurt your performance more than probably anything else. So make sure you keep an eye on the memory you're using. And on the, the memory, memory thing, though, uh, as far yeah. as I know, during init the duration, um, Lambda runs at full full power. It's not the limited to the, um, but I guess that's just a CPU, not so much the memory, because you're talking yeah. about specifically the, the memory pressure and the exactly. And the, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So let's actually talk about that too. Um, Lambda doesn't publish this, but Michael Hart a while ago did a great blog post about how you get an uncapped vCPU during initialization. And then afterwards you you get whatever equivalent vCPU you have um, in for your step of memory. So in Lambda, memory and CPU are linked. They don't publish what layer or what level memory gives you additional vCPU. Um, there is some nuance there. However, we, we anecdotally, I think well, everyone has seen this and seen the post and AWS hasn't refuted it. So I think it's pretty well understood that you get a certain amount more CPU during init. But yeah, specifically when we're talking about memory allocations and, and the RAM you're consuming, if you are seeing that the, the RAM you're using is up to uh, the limit that you've configured for that function, what's happening is your, your, your function is going to heavily swap depending on how much more memory you have to allocate. So, so that memory has to come out of memory written to disk and new bytes have to be allocated, which can be really, really painful for your cold starts. And I think a lot of people don't even realize that for many uh, toolkits like CDK and SAM, 128 megabytes is the default. Or if you just uh, upload a function to the console or use like Terraform, 128 megabytes is going to be the default memory configuration. And yeah, you're going to have more painful cold starts with that. Um, uh, finally, so three and four most common uh, issues I see with, with cold starts are probably people loading, people putting code in there and loading it and never using it at all. Um, this goes back to only only package what you need. We talked about with the AWS SDK. I see on a multi-week basis, multiple times a week, I see um, a helpful developer who went out and built a package to you know publish to EventBridge. And it, maybe that includes the entire SDK, right? Just on accident. Or I see production builds that have open API, right? Where you're generating like a Swagger doc 
all, every time your Lambda function runs just, just to, to do that. And I see that more and more with those like mono Lambda APIs where you're taking an entire API you've already built and sort of copying into Lambda and, and routing with uh, the, um, like routing internally with something like Express or something like Flask. Um, and then, yeah, probably the fifth, the fifth one for cold starts that's most common is um, taking old patterns, like having to put a giant request router into your Lambda function and, and using that all the time. Um, and if you look at an application that most people are going to run in Lambda, in, in in many cases, the the distribution of requests to that function are not equal or not even you know normal. What you see is one route maybe you know, get timeline feed. If we're building like a Twitter clone, that will be the most hit route or like get user or get tweet. You can break those out into their own dedicated functions and not load any of the other code you're loading. That's a really big improvement you can just make. Um, the other one is lazy load. So I wrote a blog post about this as well. And especially with what we've talked about, you know, mounting the zip FS and how that can improve your cold, your cold start time. If you don't load the bytes you don't need, one thing you can do is conditionally load dependencies. So if you have a user in this case, uh, my example is API Gateway is talking to AWS Lambda, which is then writing DynamoDB. It's a REST API, but we have this, you know, particular user, which is me in this example, needs to be needs a message to be published to SNS as well. Loading that SNS client, initializing it, making the connection, all of that takes time. And if you don't have to do that for every request or even most requests, it makes sense to put that in a branch and just say, okay, if this request is for AJ, then let's load the the api let, let's load the the sns sdk and by doing that once it's loaded once it's it's memoized like the node runtime keeps it around so you don't have to reload it even if you call a method again it'll be loaded um so there's an advantage there but finally you you make it so that the person that has that special case is going to pay that performance impact um and again there, there's a little bit of nuance here when it comes to how much uh, cpu you're getting so we can clearly see that during initialization where we have that theoretically full vCPU or maybe simply more CPU power, we see that the SNS client can load in about 50 milliseconds. However, when we defer this to runtime, when a Lambda function requests uh, the SNS client, we see it loads in about 80 milliseconds. And this function specifically, I think, is running in 1024 gigabyte, or like, uh, sorry, 1024 megabyte or one gigabyte of RAM. So I would expect to have a little bit less vCPU. They published that 1769 is the magic number to get one full vCPU in Lambda, and this is under. So this is exactly what I would expect to see as a result. So yeah, that's probably the, the, the last tip is, unlike your applications that are load balanced, where maybe you can load everything up front and then put it behind the load balancer and start serving traffic, in Lambda, that time is always going to be felt by users. So you may as well um, figure out who, like which requests need which dependencies, and you can use that as a, as a performance improvement.